Hey traders, this is T Bradley 90 from the My Investing Club chat. I'm one of the top mentors and moderators in chat. As a special gift to our viewers on YouTube, we have created a free two hour course to help teach you how to start a consistently profitable trading business and identify high paying setups in just 30 days. There will be limited seating every week, so register for the course and reserve your spot now using the link in the description. As a special bonus for everyone that watches the entire video, we will give you the link to a free 10 hour additional mini course that has never been released to the public. Register now before all slots completely fill up. So today, um, I'm gonna go over the key traders of the week. Every week I kind of go over the market sentiment and talk about, you know, you know, what's up, what's up, you know, what's up, Corey. <laughs> Just try to talk about what's up in the market, small caps, large caps, kind of, you know, what, which side of the field I'm playing on as far as like aggressive side or conservative side or long side or am I covering my longs, you know, quicker? Am I selling my shorts sooner than normal, right? We talk about market sentiment. Um, then I want to get into a couple of trader topics and fallacies that come up in, in, the, in the calls and, the, and my PMs throughout the week over the, the current stocks in play. And today we're, I'm going to be ranting about an issue that I'm really passionate about that um, hopefully you guys stick around to see. And at the end, we're gonna, um, I'm gonna invite Alex on, we're gonna uh, tackle the Q&A together. All right. So um, just some trades I took this week that I feel like had some, some merit to it. Um, you, <laughs> um, Roku was a continuation trade I tried to do. Now this was right after the market today had a huge slam. I, oh shit, Echo, turn off my AC. Shit. Echo, turn off my AC. Hopefully that's quieter. Yeah, so Roku was a continuation trade I took today. Kind of, I was hoping that like, I wasn't hoping that the market would um, completely crash, but I thought that um, there was a huge spy dump on manufacturing numbers. And I thought that would kind of really bring down the market. And so, I mean, evident, you know, in hindsight, market totally recovered way stronger than I ever thought it could. Um, I think Trump like said something about Ch China negotiations after that totally, um, that totally saved it. Yeah, Sam said he took the same exact trade on it. I mean, this is like the cover of the century, right? So anyway, like we slam red and there's like a support line barely. And I'm thinking this is dead cat bounce stuff. I have a very easy tight stop in red to green. I would take this trade nine times out of 10 because it's just, it's so um, aesthetically easy to take, right? It's just so, wow, it's a, it's a nice pop dead cat right into prior close. It's so easy. It was such an easy trade, so I just took it. Um, Amazon, I kind of had the same idea on Amazon. And so like Amazon, I kind of had a, like, I was kind of trying to base my trade off of this 1698 to 1700 level, trying to scale into the dead cat bounce. But like right at around here, the market was just recovering. Like I was planning on scaling all the way up to VWAP, but the market was just recovering so strong that I kind of ditched that and I eventually just covered it. So. This was, this was another, I, I was trying to break my Roku. I, I was trying to like combine Amazon and Roku. Like I, I thought they were both like Roku has been so weak on, on the daily and Amazon looks like it's about to roll over on the daily. So I was trying to short the spy, you know, via these two kind of diversified kind of trades a little bit. Both of them didn't work out. So I lost on both of them today. Same exact, you know, same exact um, play. I was, I was risking this stall here, kind of this, you know, reverse of what a first bounce notch might be the 1678 1700 area and like it, it it totally wasn't working out so i cut that one um so that continuation trade didn't work um and this is what happened so i was basing my trade off the spy and so in a way my thesis was kind of right right like these both of these stocks recovered with with the spy right so i just i thought the spy was going to at least go and see the spy like fell all the way to this 285 level. And if you look on the daily chart, the SPY's 285 level is such a huge, important level. Like it's a level that held the last couple of times the market had fear in the market. And so like we slammed down here to 285 and I was so certain that like, this was just, this was just the first bounce on 285 and that we were going to get a retest. VIVE, I actually, so funny story about this one. I actually recorded this trade live and I just haven't, um, I haven't released it because it's, 
I, like it, it, it's just kind of like a it's like a six minute video like seven minute video one two three four five six i think i started like right here now it's just like a six or seven minute video and like it's not really i mean it's a success because i i bailed out before it totally collapsed but i mean it's not really a success trade. i don't know if it's worth it you guys can let me know if you guys want me to release it but like i did get a couple pms about this trade because like oh how'd you get out so fast and i mean i can show you i recorded it so let me know if you guys want that one i mean it's only it's pretty self-explanatory that's why i didn't think about it but this trade was the first bounce um this trade was the first bounce attempt right and so the first bounce here i mean there's a, there's like a perfect notch and at the six dollar level and it's about 50 percent retracement from the start of the move at 550 to almost 650 six like we have one two three lining up in a row right my favorite elements of the first bounce you do have a little notch and just as a recap what do not like what do notches mean a notch means on its way up, it hesitated and stalled at a level, right? This is, this is a hesitation or a stall right here at $6, which means that there is some form of, there is some form of resistance there, right? Uh, U, UVXY, yeah, so this was just a, you know, one of those quick, you know, small trades I did a momentum scalp. This is also like a first down. So this was a few days ago. The, the one of the like we had a, a this is the first time tvix had popped tvix and uvxy and the vix had popped in, in quite a bit and these are almost my favorite days to play uvxy it's it's a setup i've kind of been tracking for a while the very first day that there is um it's a, it's a good back test i did the very first day of a fear move or some kind of panic move um like that that spikes the uvxy or the vix it's, they, they typically have a very nice first bounce because um it's just it's just the nature of the spy like everyone like everyone like gets afraid like it's the first fear in a very long time it's almost like the the first time philosophy that what we talked about the last time it's the very first first bounce of the fear so it typically works pretty well so um but this one i did i wasn't trying to find the bottom i wanted to see the initial strength first but that's what i do on scalps i don't need to get the exact bottom and top um so yeah it's a good first bouncer on the first fear in a long time and so these small wins just add up throughout the week. You don't need any home runs. As long as you can avoid the trouble, this is what you're looking for. Just small, small stuff to, to keep you out of trouble. Um, MU is a good one uh, this week. This is, this is a classic SSR watch. This is one of my favorite patterns, right? Um, originally, I had orders down here in the 60s, and I was a little hesitant. Like, I think I, ha I think I had an order in the 60, but I canceled it because I was trying to see how far the SSR, you know, stacking to the downside would go. So I was like, you know what? It it's now so far down, I can actually just wait for like the, the turn to happen. And that's kind of what I did with UVXY. I wait for the turn to happen and I get in, right? And so that's what I did with this one is it it's an SSR big wash from like this 4320 and um, like low a day, low a day wash. And I'm trying to see how much lower it's going to go. And I try to get it right after the bottom's made. All right, so this week has been kind of depressing for me. Like, honestly, like this market participant list is normally like so full, I'm cutting like the, the, the non-movers, the low volume stock. There was really not much I, I felt had really any kind of volume or movement this week. And nothing ever, nothing met, met, or, met or broke any expectations I had. Um, of holding besides maybe meat stay, right? Um, like all of everything just kind of just, but everything just kind of broke down, just no continuation, no follow through, stuff's left and right. Small cap land is just in cricket mode right now. Um, the only positive I see is that like the spy's massive tank today totally reclaimed, probably the strongest reco recovery I've seen in a very long time just immediately like that straight verticals, like all the way back up above, above green to green on the day. So that's a positive. Um, but yeah, the IMRN like tank and the VIVE massive stuff, just basically scaring the sh living shit out of longs right now. Like, like OBLN was kind of like the, the OBLN stuffs today were kind of I, almost like a testament to how scared longs are. No one's willing to buy near high of day because nobody has any faith that breakouts are going to happen. So the anticipation longs are out, and that's probably, a, I don't even know, I can't even say this with any confidence, but 
anticipation longs have to be a huge percentage of the longs because they're kind of what help push stocks over high a day. Oh, perfect. Cool. Perfect, man. What's up, man? Long time no fucking see, man. Shit. Yeah. Dude, I was... last, time we, last time we hung out was at the uh, Philly. Dude, I know. It was so sick. That was a good time. Man. Have you had Chick-fil-A since then? No, man. You guys had to send me one, dude. <laughs> if I send it to you, it's going to get mold and shit. <laughs> dude, I mean, dude, like, I'll microwave it. I mean, bacteria can't, or I'll bake it. Bacteria can't exist over 140, so. <laughs> oh, shit. You learn something new every day. What's up, man? Did you trade today? What, what was, what was kind of going through your head today? Dude, dude like, I didn't have much, so I just try, I was just in. I was just dipping in large cap lands, and I I I ended the day small red on after Roku and Amazon. Um, yeah, I saw that dude. That that bounce because uh, I was watching. I was watching the market when it kind of happened, and it was just like fucking straight down, dude. It was like three points straight down, and I was like, "There's like that first shot where that bounce short that you were looking at." I was actually watching the spy as well, and I was like, "If it goes and tests VWAP around." Uh, like 1023 if it goes and tests vwap around there that's probably going to reject the first time at least so i think at least, at least the first time it's going to fucking reject and then three minutes later you get that 1026 candle and it goes straight up and then i was like oh shit they mean fucking business today and then and i kept going up too yeah it just went fucking straight up oh now we got the powell that's suggested more cuts. I mean, yeah, I mean, who the fuck knows what the hell is going to happen? I mean, everyone's been saying recession, but whenever everyone says recession, it's a buy the dip, and then it's all China shit and the European shit, and I don't know. It's fucking crazy, man. But, I mean, like you said, small cap land has been, like, really slow. Um, it's kind of like squeezing water out of a rock lately. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's still opportunities to kind of make money, but, like, if you think about it, logically obln didn't really have much meat on the bone uh it was only up i think it was like 20 percent on the day or like 25 percent on the day yeah that's and, actually why I avoided it. yeah there was really nothing it's like you're like you said we're we're kind of like scalping for peanuts these days just to kind of get the itch out of our system but the truth of the matter is that like you said these are the moments where shorts feel the most in control where there's the high likelihood where a runner is going to come back. And, you know, historically, October and November is LAKE, AQXP, dries, all that shit. So, I mean, if what was it last time? Was it RKDA that kind of lit everything back up? Yeah, it I mean, was RKDA. So that day, that day that RKDA went up, it was like there was no dip in sight. All the shorts were stuck. All the longs were in control. And it was like that for two days. And then more longs happened. So, like, me personally right now is I am kind of stocking and waiting for a low flow to kind of come along and catch everyone off guard. Because if it does, there's a really high likelihood that the first day that it does run, it's probably not going to tank because everyone's going to be stuck. So I'm kind of stocking and waiting for that and kind of trying to see if something's going to light up the market again. Cause right now it's just so fucking slow. It's like, pump and dumps and stupid shit that's up and yeah obln you can make money on but if you realistically look at the range it's like 25 cents of range and it's not really that appealing you know so anyway that's my rant just stay safe that something should be happening soon whether it be this week whether it be next week whether it be tomorrow or next month we are long overdue and when we're long overdue we get some fucking crazy ass shit so yeah let's uh, let's go through it yeah dude that's what i'm waiting for like on a day-to-day -day basis, like, uh, OBLN had, like, a 6 million share float. I don't think it's going to be something. I think it's going to be, like, the 2 million share floaters, like, the 1 to 2s. It's going to be something that, like, pops up 30%, 40%. And, like, you know, it's just going to it's gonna have something like this, like, tank in the morning. And it's going to have that classic reclaim setup in the morning. And I'm waiting for it every day. Yep, exactly, man. Exactly. I mean, look, bro. Yes, there's – what was that other one? The P stock. Let me pull up my chart real quick. Uh, PSTV. PDSV, PDSV, yeah. Uh, PDSV, I was looking at that, and that was literally, literally, I was just like, I threw out a fancy order around five bucks. I hit four ninety nine. Yeah. And that was basically, I, did, I think I did like a thousand shares, and I made like 60 cents on it. But even shit like that, even shit like that is not an ideal setup. And that's why I can't be using so much size on it, you know? Yeah. I hear. You. I I I fat fingered a I I fat fingered that one 
But, oh, um, I see. I see what you're trying right I, I was trying to go. He was at five, and I was like, I wasn't ready. Like, I was like, shit. Gotta, yeah. Because, you know, you know it's coming down. Yeah, I mean, the, the play I was doing was just a first resistance round five, and I did a thousand shares, and you know, I was okay losing 20 cents, 30 cents, and 300 bucks on it. But like, realistically, I really shouldn't even be taking those trades. Those are trades that like I'm doing to scratch my trader itch. I'm doing right. that shit because like, if I don't do it, I know that the next day I'm gonna have FOMO. So like, a lot of people ask, like, I know I'm kind of going on a tangent, but you know, a lot of people ask, like, what do you do to kind of cure FOMO? How do you control yourself? And, you know, for me personally, everyone has like a different method to their madness. But say, for example, let's say my max size is 10,000 shares, right? And if you put that into perspective, say your max size is like 1,000 shares. To eliminate FOMO for me sometimes is I'll put on a position of like 100 shares or I'll put on a position of 200 shares. And that position isn't there for me to make money. That position is just for me to kind of get that itch out of my system. I am okay paying 20 bucks or 30 bucks to kind of clear my mindset just so that later when an opportunity does come, I don't get in there too early because I haven't gotten my beak wet the past couple of days, you know? So, I mean, there's the, this, this shit is like more of a, more of an art than a science. You kind of have to find what fits your personality. Bow scalps fucking 50 stocks a day and I have to literally rip him out of the setup to get him out of there. Whereas me, like, I take usually one or two trades a day, sometimes less than fucking 10 minutes long. And that's what fits my personality. I am the type of person that likes to make my money and get the hell out of there. Whereas Bao is more of a control freak and he likes to just be in there and squeeze out every dime that he can. We were at his house in San Jose the other day and we were like hanging out and it was 3.55 market time. And he sits at a setup. He's like, all right, what can I scalp around here? What can I, I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, bro? You got five minutes to trade. You're looking for a scalp now? He's like, yeah, yeah shit, you're right, you're right. So like, you have to find what fits, fits your personality. And for me, my personality is like, I want to make the money. I want to walk away and I want to lock it up. Because if I do not lock it up, I will 100% start trading as if I'm in a casino. Hey traders, this is Tosh. I go by T Bradley 90 in the My Investing Club chat. Just wanted to reach out and say if you have any questions about MIC, joining MIC, maybe you're a member already, you have three ways to contact myself personally and through MIC. You can hit our social media, you can hit me through PMs in chat, or you can contact us through my email at Tosh at myinvestingclub.com. That's T O S H at myinvestingclub.com. I will get back to you in a timely manner, and I'm saying this because I'm here to help, and I don't want anybody to be afraid to reach out and ask any question that they have. We are here for you guys. All right, see you guys.